This video lecture series covered the class C CIV 6540, Probabilistic Machine Learning for Civil Engineer. This class is taught at Polytechnique Montreal. So this first video is an introductory video to look at what is machine learning, why should you be doing it, and how are we going to go step by step through it, through this class. Okay, the reference for the class is the book that uh, bears the same name as the class, Holistic Machine Learning for Civil Engineers. So first, machine learning, why would you be interested in looking into that? Okay, it's applicable in the case where you have data. Okay, here's an illustrative example. Imagine your data is the fruit. And what you want to obtain from that fruit is to extract as much information as possible. See that as the juice. And machine learning, the tools we're gonna see together are actually a uh, toolbox, okay? Bunch of different tools that will allow you to extract as much information as possible from your data in terms of deducing or inferring relationship from the data or allowing you to make prediction for unseen quantities, okay? So we're gonna see that step by step through the class, but keep in mind what we're gonna to see together are tools to really understand the underlying relationship that exists in your data, whether it's lab data, what is the lab that you collected from various experiments, whether it is publicly available databases, okay? So now what is machine learning, okay? Before going looking at what is machine learning, we're gonna see what is business as usual, what you're probably doing where and when you're trying to analyze data. So we start with the input. We start with data set coming from the lab, coming from the database, coming from anywhere. And typically the learning that is building upon this data set is done by you, is done by the human. And then once you figure out the relationship that exists in the data, what you're gonna do is that you're gonna implement that model you develop into a computer. So in this sense, the computer is gonna crunch the data and return some prediction. But this computer typically really heavily relies on the human for its development, okay? And the other part is that since the human is doing the learning, so extracting the relationship from the raw data, at the end, it's the human that extracts information from the data itself. So we want to go away from this paradigm where the learning is centered on the human to uh, another paradigm where the computer learns, okay? With machine learning, we still start with the data, okay? We might have some human in the loop here in the input because first, uh, it's the human that's now gonna program the computer so that the computer does the task of learning, learning the relationship that exists in your database, okay? So now there's still a arrow between data and human. Why? Because the, in the, the current state of the art of machine learning, the humans still have to select, for instance, which machine learning model, which machine learning techniques is going to be most appropriate for the task you're trying to do, okay? So it's still not 100% uh, machine driven. The humans still have to guide and to act as an architect, in a sense, which model structure is going to be most suited for my data for the task I'm trying to accomplish here, okay? But as the time go, the goal is to minimize here that arrow in order for the computer to learn in a more autonomous way, okay? This is the aim of the field, to really have uh, methods that will be able to learn and evolve on their own. So what happened here, the human programmed the computer in a very generic way so that it can adapt itself to various problems find the underlying relationship and then return prediction or extract uh, information regarding the relationship that are there in the data set. So business as usual, the learning is centered on human and machine learning will let the computer extract and identify those relationships. So, okay, if we look a little more closely, what is machine learning? 
Here, the way we say that we program the computer to learn, in many cases with respect to supervised learning, unsupervised learning, to a lesser extent with reinforcement learning, what we want to do in machine learning is to build function. We're going to build uh, large functions that are extremely general. Okay, these functions are going to be parameterized with either uh, variables or parameters or both. And what we want to do is with this function, it's going to return prediction. And with machine learning, what we want to do is to, to use that generic function that is highly flexible and can adapt to pretty much any problem. What we want is to use data in order to learn the parameters and or variable associated with that function. So that function can adapt to any problem. We're going to use the data in our specific problem in order to learn what would be the parameter and variable in that problem. And for that, the learning in machine learning is the task of inferring those parameter and variable that explain the data. And here are <clears throat> two main ways of doing this. The first one is to say, I'm going to look at what are all possible values of parameter and variable that are compatible with the data. The second one is going to be to rely on point estimate. Okay, to say, so if you're looking at all possible values, I'm just going to look at the single set of parameter or variable that best explain my data. Okay, we're going to see these two paradigms and in which case, which one is best. But keep in mind, if we just try to draw a simplistic uh, picture of what is the learning and machine learning, it's learning the parameter for that generic function that can adapt to anything that best explain the data that we have at hand. So what are the objectives for the class? The first one is to, you're not going to be at the end of the class a uh, machine learning expert, okay? The goal here is to make you understand the core principle, okay? So that you can apply this to uh, your research or your uh, practice and you know where to look next. So in a sense, what I want you is to understand what is the potential of machine learning to engineering and more specifically, civil engineering applications. So what can machine learning do for your task you're seeing in your practice or research. And I want to enable you to create different model uh, for different types of problem, whether they are regression, classification, time series, decision problems. Okay, I want you to be able to create these generic function I mentioned in the previous slide. And finally, what I want you is to be able to adapt these generic function to your specific problem. This is what we're going to refer to as training the model. How do we learn these uh, parameters? How do we learn these uh, variable in order for the model to uh, capture the underlying relationship in your data, being able to extract information and also return prediction for uh, new quantities. So, all of this is done through a theoretical understanding of the methods uh, of machine learning. So this class is not at all about uh, the usage of the various toolbox that are available online. Okay, this class is not about using machine learning, it's really about understanding the core principle of machine learning so that you can then go and use the toolbox that are widely available and you can use them safely because you understand the potential and limitations of each of them. So the whole class is really centered about understanding the theory a lot more than just uh, quickly using the toolbox that are already available. available. So the course organization is divided in five, five parts. So it starts with the background. So I want to make sure that everyone going to the class as the same minimal background to understand what's going to come next. So we're going to first look at the revision about linear algebra, so it's simply the core principle, and the same a revision about probability theory, which is fundamental in learning, because when we say we need to learn the parameter and variable of our generic function, this is a task of inferring the value, and the task of inference is intrinsically um, probabilistic. 
Okay, we need to look at this in a context of probability theory. So everything we're going to do is going to rely on probability theory. That's why we need to meet that minimum background in order to go forward. We're also then going to look at specific some probability distribution, uh, probability distribution function that are going to be used in the context of the methods we're going to rely on. Then we're going to look at the machine learning basics. So we're going to look at Bayesian estimation. This is going to be the core theory that will enable the learning in our machine learning. Okay, we're going to see how, we're going to see it when in module three. Then in order to put that Bayesian estimation framework into application, we're going to see some estimation methods, namely MCMC sampling, Markov chain Monte Carlo, as well as Newton or more generally gradient based optimization methods. Okay, these are going to be the one that will enable the learning in our machine learning methods. So the Bayesian estimation, it will allow us to frame the problem. The MCMC sampling and gradient based optimization is going to allow us to put into application this learning framework. Once this is going to be covered, we're going to really go in the core of machine learning. We're going to start with supervised learning methods with regression and classification. Then we're going to see uh, unsupervised learning method, namely here state space model in order to handle time dependent problems. So to make time series analysis. And finally, we're going to switch into decision making and reinforcement learning. We're first going to uh, present the decision theory principle and then building on this, we'll look into sequential decision problem. And how is this related to artificial intelligence through reinforcement learning? OK, learning from trial and error by having an artificial agent, the computer interacting with an environment. So this is for the class organization organized into nine module. Now we are going to see for the reference for this class is the book Prolistic Machine Learning for Civil Engineering uh, for Civil Engineers that is available in open access on the website that is in the description of the video. It's also available for purchase at various books, bookstores. And what I want you to notice is that the organization of the book doesn't follow exactly the organization of the class. OK, so the organization of the book starts with the background where we cover the uh, linear algebra, probability theory, probability distribution, and finally optimization methods. Then building on this background, we see the Bayesian estimation with the Bayesian, uh, uh, Bayesian estimation and the uh, sampling methods, namely MCMC. Then building on this, we first look at supervised learning, then unsupervised learning. So they are here. This is about um, here we have clustering. Here we have Bayesian network. In the context of these video lecture, we're only going to see in terms of unsupervised learning chapter 12, which is going to be time series analysis. And here we have a hierarchical Bayesian estimation for model calibration, which is not covered in these video lecture neither, but that are covered in the book. And finally, the last module is about utility theory and sequential decision making with reinforcement learning. So at the end, this video lecture doesn't go at the same depth as the book, but I always you I suggest that you use both. So use the video lecture as an introduction, and then you can complete uh, your understanding with uh, what the material that is in the book that goes in more detail with respect to the derivation of all the equation we're covering here, as well as the the theory and the explanation. So uh, so that's it. All of the content is online, either through the book or the video lecture.